you and welcome to Games Master, TV's only show devoted solely to video games. So if the sentence, Mario got stomped by a green Cooper paratrooper makes any sense to you, you're tuned to the right church. If it doesn't, and you're one of those people who think Game Boy is a young scout doing bobber jobs, then watch on and erase that ignorance. And to get the show kicked off, let's call up everybody's favourite uncle, Games Master, for the first challenge. Greetings, and I'd like to take this opportunity to say how delighted I am to see you again. If you enjoyed last week's challenge, I think you'll find tonight's three little jaunts an absolute hoot. First off the starting box, an endearing young fellow by the name of Sonic the Hedgehog. Your task? You have two minutes to collect 150 rings, or more, on the second level of an area known as the Green Hill Zone. These rings are dotted around a tropical landscape, plagued with all manners of hostile creatures and booby traps, every one of them intent on thwarting young Sonic's progress. And beware, the slightest collision will cause you to lose all your rings, and the challenge will be over. So, two minutes, 150 rings or more. Happy hunting. And trying to find the rings on this prickly challenge is Alex Berry from Stanmore. <laughs> Now, Alex, there are a total of 163 rings on this level. We originally set you 150, but you asked it to be increased to 160. Why was that? Because uh, it was just a great challenge, and uh, I want to show everyone that I'm the master. So. Right, but you think you can even do that in two minutes? Yep, no problem. Well, I certainly admire your pluck, young man. It's nice to see such flushing confidence in you. Would you like to plonk yourself down in our games playing chair? We'll get ready to start. And joining me in the pulpit is a man who knows more than most about this machine, Sega Power Magazine's deputy editor, Neil West. Neil, welcome to Games Master. Thanks, Dominic. Now, we have a very cocky young competitor here. What advice could you give him? <laughs> Certainly do. 150 is tough enough, but 160. Um, basically, um, you can wish through this level very quickly, but you'd miss the rings. There are some very tricky stages, so pick up an invincibility shield before you take them on. That's my advice. Okay. Is our competitor ready? Yep. Then, Alex, your two minutes begin... Now. Okay, off he goes. No so rings straight away, no problem. Right, we can see the clock in the top left hand corner, the number of rings he's got underneath it. So he's on nine. He started quite well. He's not doing too badly. As you can just see, he curls up in the ball when he jumps, and he can actually kill the baddies. Um, what he's got to watch out for is if he walks into a baddie, runs into one, or just lands on top of one after falling, then he takes a hit. And the problem there is that he drops all his rings. You've got to remember, there's only 163 in the whole level. He's after 160, so he really can't afford to miss any whatsoever. Okay, well, he's coming up for 30 seconds, just about here. Nearly a quarter of the way through. Oh, wait, that was a little television screen inside that. Oh, my word, he's for power. Picked up and um, gives him speedy moves, making him faster. Those two there have ten rings each, and now he's got. You see, he's surrounded by a sort of glow. That's right. um, an invincibility ship. Oh, he's got it at some speed here, isn't he? Oh, he is. just missed the spider. That was a little bit of a closing oh, round. He's doing. Oh my God! He's up on some roof there. He's got an extra life, and he's collecting rings. He's up to 76. 76 rings, 47 seconds gone. He's doing remarkably well. Halfway through the amount of rings. Yeah, he's doing very well indeed. While he's got that shield, it protects him. He can collide into a bat and he won't lose the rings. Very, very useful. Oh, now what's this lovely little spangled sherbet dab around? Well, he's obviously had his ready break. <laughs> it also means that um, he can bump into baddies without having to knock, um, without having to curl up into a ball. So that's going to help him a lot. I see. So we're just over halfway through. 109 rings. It's going to be quite close here. Okay. Well, he's got a lot of rings in a short amount of time, but he's taken all the easy ones. He's now going to explore the sort of trickier parts of the level and discover all the ones that are hidden in different places. Okay, there's another 10 there's rings another here. 10. 126 yeah. rings and he's got... catapult. 14 rings left. He's got 35 seconds left. He should do this. 142 rings left. It's going to be very close. Oh, 150. 10 Can left. Find another 10. 10 rings left. 30 seconds to go. He should do it. He, oh, my word. Now he's going to need a little bit some more rings here. There's another 10. 10. And it's another 160. He's going to get out in 25 seconds. He's, he's out. He's Alex, 
Alex, you had 23 seconds to spare. You made it look easy. Was there ever any doubt in your mind? Yeah, there was a couple of times because the only way I could get 160 wings was to bash through the wall, and I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I thought I was going to mess it up. OK, well, as one of our games playing champions, you win the prize that sits lovingly on anyone's mantelpiece, the Golden Games Master Joystick! <laughs> And now, while Alex gets to grips with this humongous possession, we're all going to take a look at this week's reviews. This week, oil your deltoids and unsheathe your weapons as we look at beat-em-ups. First up, on the Amiga, the Bruce Lees of the future give a hearty key in First Samurai. It looks very Chinese takeaway, lots of uh, lotus trees and uh, bamboo furniture. But uh, underneath all this uh, colourful exterior, there's um, a real... Uh, good game. It um, features some beautiful graphics, brilliant sampled sound effects, bits of Handel's Messiah thrown in for good measure. I think the first Samurai deserves a thumbs up because it's a great game with plenty to do and beat up. Next, also on the Amiga, we enter the murky underworld of Pit Fighter. Three butch contestants trade below the belt action in an orgy of unrestrained violence. Pit Fighter's um, less of a, a beat em up, more of a sort of kick the living crap out of everybody I'm up. It's boring, you don't have that many moves. The computer tends to decide what you're going to do next. It's not so much um, counter attacking your opponent's moves, more just mindly stabbing the fire button and wiggling the joystick seems to be just as effective. Finally, pulsating pixels of monochrome muscle on the Game Boy with Double Dragon 2. Cute, safe, nice, cool. You walk along and you smack people in the teeth and that's about it. And that's quite good fun as it turns out. And now for this week's hardware feature. Sometimes all there is between gaming success and failure is the power of your handpiece. Tonight we look at three of the latest gimmicks which may just turn you from a limp joystick fiddler into a gargantuan games player. First up, the Power Glove, a futuristic gauntlet that translates hand and arm movements into on-screen action. First of all, you have to enter in specific program code for the game you're about to play. This game here is Top Gun and the program code is number three, so I'm now entering program three. If I pull up on my hand, the, the plane goes down. If I push forward with my hand, the plane goes up. Small movements to the left to bring the plane round, bank, banking to the left, and uh, the same with the right. When I want to fire my missiles, I simply press my index finger, as so. The glove's pretty good to use. It feels like you're more in the game and you do get a sweat using it. Next, use your feet as well as your fingers with the Quickjoy foot pedal. You can set through a control on the foot pedal and the buttons on the foot pedal to correspond to the different buttons on the joystick. It was good for the car racing game um, and I should think it would be good for, say, a beat-em-up game where you have to kick, but I don't know whether it would be good for puzzle games. And finally, Terence Conran's favourite, the Sega Action Chair. The idea is just to move about in, in the seat as you would move the joystick up and down, left, right, and push the buttons. You can get very physically involved in the game and it feels like you're jumping about and practically everything instead of just moving your hand about pressing the button. If you'd like any more info on these joysticks or anything else in the programme, you can call the Games Master Club. The number to phone will be given at the end of the show. So, a somewhat mixed bag of reviews this week. But not to worry, for now we go on to our celebrity challenge. And here to tell us all about it is the biggest celeb of them all, the Games Master. Back so soon? Well, after the whimsical antics of Sonic the Hedgehog, I thought it was about time we tested your physical might. The second challenge is on Sonic Blastman. A megalithic meteorite is careering toward the Earth. You have three punches to destroy it and save the planet, a truly Herculean task. 
The person who recalls the highest score is the winner. So, uh, roll up your sleeves, and remember that the fate of mankind is at the mercy of your fists. To find the perfect competitors for this unique challenge, we scoured the arcades and gyms nationwide and came up with a perfect competition. British Sonic Blastman champion Paul Turner against one of the most fearsome punches in world boxing, former British heavyweight champion Gary Mason. Now, Gary, if I could start with you, Paul is a legend in the arcades, both as a brilliant player and a tough street fighter. How are you going to cope against him? Well, for years, everybody's been hearing about Mike Tyson, but nobody knows about Paul, but I have. <laughs> so I'm prepared for him. Okay, Paul, Gary's record is very impressive. 36 fights, 35 wins, 32 of which have been knockouts. You must be trembling. Not really. He might be champ in the ring, but he's not champ in the arcade. I'm the champ. Okay, well we look like we've got a bit of a grudge match here. If you want to see if the tough arcade street fighter topples the Polish professional slugger, join us after the break. Welcome back to Games Master, where we're about to see rough, tough arcade street fighter Paul Turner take on the Polish professional punches of Gary Mason. It's a punch-up everybody's been waiting for, so let's call up Paul Turner to take the first punches. And joining me in the pulpit to keep me out of harm's way tonight is Tim Boone from Computer and Video Games Magazine. Welcome, Tim. Hello, Dominic. Okay, so who's your favourite then? Uh, well, I've seen Paul in training and he's looking very good indeed. However, you have to be a fool to bet against Gary Mason, so that's who my money is on. Well, call me a fool, but I'm going to put my money on Paul, Tim. You're on. Okay, so three punches to destroy the meteorite. Whoever has the most tonnage at the end of the three punches wins the fight. Paul, will you take your first punch? Here he goes, winding up. Ooh. Great first hit. Oh, and a huge hit! 123 tons, Tim. Fantastic punching power there from Paul. That was very surprising. Great punch. Okay then, Paul, that was a brilliant first punch. Prepare to take your second. Oh, another massive one there, Tim. Not as good, not as good. You could tell by the way that the, the, the pad slammed down. He hadn't quite caught it in exactly the right place. He'll be disappointed with that one. So he needs 124 to smash up the meteorite. He can do it on the basis of his first blow. Okay, Paul, take your third and final punch. <laughs> Is that a good one, Tim? It was a good one, but it wasn't enough. 106 tons. 106 tons. Didn't destroy the meteorite, but still, very powerful total tonnage. Very powerful. But Paul needn't be too down about that. Not, a, not at all. This is, in fact, the, the game at its highest setting. Okay, Gary, if you'd like to step up and take your three punches. So the meteorite's coming down. Let's see what Gary does with his first punch. I think what Gary's going to try and do, actually, is explore the different punches that he can use. I think uh, probably the first thing he'll do is go for a jab. Let's have a look. Oh! That was a jab. Now, was it very powerful? Let's take a look. 105. Quite, quite a safe points to start off. Good, but I'm, I'm convinced Gary Mason can, can do better. This time, looks like he's done. Okay, Gary, take your second punch. Straight right. Straight right, that should be better. 107 tons. He's now look, he's looking for the knockout blow, and he needs 138 tons to right. smash up that meter. He needs something very special now. Okay, we need a big punch here, Gary, if big you want to win. Gary. Take your third and final punch. Oh, it's oh. a huge one there. Is it going to be enough to smash oh. 190 tons? Excellent. Not quite enough. The Not big quite. thing is, has he beaten Paul? Gary's total power 331. He's just been beaten by Paul. Paul is the winner by one ton. One ton. Congratulations, Gary. You had a lovely combination of punches, but it wasn't quite enough on the day. No, it looks as if losing is becoming a habit for me these days. <laughs> <laughs> if I could go on to the winner, Paul, I mean, that was stunning. It was, I just done it, it was just on the spur of the moment and I had to beat him. Okay, got, now, got to remain a champ. Now you've beaten Gary on the game,
Can we see a match in the ring between the two of you? There'd be a rematch. He knows where to find me. Any arcade, any day. I'm still the champion. That's where I want to stay. <laughs> and what have you got to say to that, Gary? Well, I'll be scouring all the arcades during my lunch hour looking for Paul Turner. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we'll look forward to the rematch. Meanwhile, Paul, you have won the prize that every fighter dreams of. Our special golden Games Master joystick. <laughs> I show Gary and Ali shuffle or two in the car park. Let's find out the latest tips and cheats Games Master has for us in his consultation zone. Hello, Games Master. Welcome to my kingdom. I am delighted to see you. And what have you got to ask me? After hours of playing on level 3 of Strider, I cannot get past the closing rules section without hearing you getting squashed. Can you help me? Indeed I can, young man. Now listen. Instead of trying to climb up one side of the wall, you should jump from side to side. You will find that your upward progress accelerates and you should have no trouble reaching the summit before the walls meet. Cheers, mate. Bye. Uh, next, please. Hello, Games Master. Hello, and nice to see you. Now, what can I do for you? I heard in Super Mario Bros. 3 there's a secret whistle in the first world, which enables you to warp into a later level. I don't know where it is. Do you have any idea? Do I know where it is? Oh, the audacity of youth. Of course I do. The whistle is on level three of the first world. But bear with me, because finding it is a little complicated. You will need to jump on top of the fifth rock of the level, a white one, then squat for five seconds you will then fall behind the background scenery. Once there, go to the end of the stage and you will enter a house where the first whistle is kept. Thanks a lot. Next up, please, and hurry along, Bill. Hello, Games Master. In Robocop, how do I kill the two people at the end of level two? Good question. Good question indeed. Actually, contrary to popular belief, you don't have to kill both of these men, as one of them is actually the mayor being held hostage. You need to select the machine gun, and then, whenever the mayor in front ducks down, shoot the man behind. If you shoot him three times, he'll release the mayor and come charging towards you. When this happens, punch him, and he will eventually die. All right, thanks. Not at all. And I think that's enough goodies for this little session, though I must admit I do rather enjoy my role as agony uncle. Make sure you tune in for our next rendezvous. So, some juicy computer tip bits this week. Now for our final challenge, let's see what Games Master has planned. My final challenge tonight is on lemmings. The lemming is an exasperating breed of rodent that seems hell-bent on committing suicide. You're charged with delivering a certain percentage of these creatures to safety by guiding them through a tricky obstacle course. But the only way you can do this, I'm sorry to say, is by blowing up some of the lemmings to make holes that the others can fall through. Once a lemming has been programmed to explode, it takes five seconds to self-destruct. Perfect time is therefore required to ensure that the lemmings explode over the sections of the puzzle where there's no furnace. The slightest slip up will signal a mass in enemy's cremation. Oh, no. You have two minutes to save 90% of the lemmings. A race of retarded rodents is depending on you. Now, Lemmings is a hugely successful game and this is an incredibly tough challenge. So we tried to find one of the best Lemmings players in the country and we found him in Leicester. Please give a succulent Games Master welcome to Robert Clark. Master Robert. Hi Dominic, it's nice to be here. Now Robert, we've said you're one of the best Lemmings players in the country. How long did it take you to complete all 120 levels? Oh, about six weeks. Six weeks? Yes. Now unfortunately we only told you you were doing this particular level five minutes ago. What was your reaction? Uh, I was pretty shocked. Do you think you can clock it? Uh, I'll have a go. Okay then, if you'd like to go and sit yourself down in our pine hot seat, we'll get ready to play the game. Okay. 
Now, we've dragged him back screaming, but back here is Tom Watson from Renegade. Welcome back, Tom. Nice to be back, Dominic. Now, I know Lemons is one of your favourite games, but this Definitely. is a very tricky level here we sent. Well, this is very much a right first time level. He's got 91% uh, to get home. He can afford to use up six. There's only one style of Lemming he can use, which is the exploding style, to get through the floors, missing the fires on the way. It'll really test him. OK, well, let's see if Robert's up to it. Robert, are you ready? Then start saving those lemmings. OK, the lemmings are starting to come out. He's got a guide up to the exit at the bottom right hand corner just off the screen. Tom, how does he go about it? Well, what he's got to do, Dominic, is set up a series of time charges on selected lemmings. You can see the counter working its way down. There are a number of safe compartments on the way. What he's got to do is make sure that all the explosions only take his lemmings through the safe compartments and not the ones with the deep fries. He's just doing well enough because it is 91% that he has to get back. It's high, high total. It's very, very tense here. He may have to go to the lemmings, but the, no, there's, there's, one minute, there's one minute 18 seconds down now. He's got two minutes. So, one minute 14. He's probably got enough time to bring them home. It's just will it be enough? You can see the percentage counter clocking them as the lemmings get home, but it's 91% that we're looking for. Okay, he lost a few in the prize. That's all the lemmings out now. It's very, very tense here. We can see the percentage going out. And the bottom right hand corner of the screen, it's got to get to 91%. It's going to be very, very close here. I, I think he's all right on the timer. It really does come down to this percentage mark. Now he's just tipping 60. We can see the concentration gains at the end when he sped up the release That's rate. Right. And the Robert, you were one or two lemmings away from that. It was very close. Tell us, what went wrong? Well, um, the third bomber, they just timed him in the wrong place and went to part, you know. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Right, now, I know that you've clocked the whole game, but is that one of the tougher levels? Do you think? Uh, it is pretty tough, yeah. Timing's critical, otherwise you're dead from the start, really. Right, well, our commiserations once again, Rob, but you supplied us with a lot of, um, a lot of sparkly fun anyway. Okay. Um, thank you very much indeed, and you may tread with a weary heart, but happy memories back to Leicester. Cheers. Robert Clark. So, with that exhilarating but ultimately fruitless effort, tonight's show comes to an end. Well, it's smoking jacket and steaming jasmine time. We'll see you in seven days for another Games Master. Good night. Now for that information about the Games Master Club. We have newsletters, free t-shirts and competitions with staggering prizes. The Monk Hotline number to call is 0891 600 123. Calls are charged at 36 pence a minute after 6pm and 48 pence during the day. Lines are open around the clock.